It has been a while, but welcome to the Radioactive Exclusion Zone. Within this planetary region, you'll find that the air is pretty heavy. As you're exploring the caves, the air is mixed with ash-like dust particles as you can visually see all around you. It makes it pretty difficult to breathe in this region. The radioactive exclusion zone usually features big open spaces that are connected by wide tunnels, while featuring one of the most prominent and common hazards known as radioactive crystals. While these crystals are known to be dangerous, they do produce light within the darkness. They can without a doubt make an exotic looking background image for your computer. The radioactive exclusion zone is rated at 3 for rock hardness, meaning that it requires 3 pickaxes for you to destroy the environment around you. This is by far the hardest rock to destroy with a pickaxe in the game. And with this rock hardness noted, it's also worth for me mentioning that dirt pads are unaffected by rock hardness. The materials you can expect to find in the radioactive exclusion zone are Umanite, which has an abundant supply, and Enor Pearls, which have a scarce supply. As far as enemy encounters go in the radioactive exclusion zone, it looks like there is a few enemies that have mutated to the radioactive environments within this planetary region. Those would happen to be the Glyphid Praetorian and the Glyphid Exploder. Glyphid Swarmers are also slightly modified within this region. Oh, and on top of all that, radioactive exclusion zone enemy variants can be far more resistant to radiation damage than creatures found elsewhere on Hoxies. And there's also one more unique creature that you can find in the radioactive exclusion zone, known as the Silicate Harvester. These creatures will slowly sift through the caves looking for food, throwing up small clouds of dust while doing so. It is completely oblivious to damage and its surroundings, and it won't really react to either. Let us first start off with the mutated enemies. When exploring the radioactive exclusion zone, Glyphid Praetorians and Glyphid Exploders not only look different, but their attacks are also slightly modified. The Glyphid Praetorian, on the other hand, has a much different attack as of course compared to its original counterparts. The Radioactive Praetorian has a much higher speed stack compared to the conventional Praetorian and the Frost Praetorian. And instead of barfing on you with poison or icy breath, it'll instead generate a radioactive area of effect bubble around it. This of course damages anything in front of it or even behind it. We all know how annoying it is to get slowed by a Frost Praetorian, but wait till you come across the Radioactive Praetorian. And mostly because of the fact that their speed is even higher than the conventional Praetorian and the Frost Praetorian. And of course, when they die, they will also leave behind a radioactive bubble, which has a small AoE effect around it. Moving on to the Radioactive Exploder, compared to its counterpart, the stats are completely the same. Except for the fact that it's also resistant to radioactive damage. Radioactive Exploders will explode, dealing radiation damage. And it will also leave a lingering radioactive cloud behind it, damaging anything within the area of effect. You can only really imagine that if Exploder Infestation is active during this planetary region, it can get pretty spicy with all the area of effect that you might create when you kill them. Glyphid Swarmers are also slightly modified when it comes to this planetary region. Much like the common Grunts, Grunt Guards, or even Grunt Slashers, the Glyphid Swarmers also have a slight green hue that is added to their bodies. They will also produce a green light wherever they appear within the darkness, making it easy for you to spot them from very far away angles, or even when you're about to get annoyed by Swarmageddon. The wiki also does mention that Glyphid Swarmers also release a cloud of radiation upon death. Fortunately, that does not happen to be the case when killing Glyphid Swarmers. This is me not pointing out the wiki and giving him a fact check, I'm essentially stating that it's a very big relief that they don't release a radioactive cloud whenever they die. That would be way more annoying when it comes to Swarmageddon being active as well. The danger doesn't stop there. For in Deep Rock, danger, darkness, dwarves. Let's move on to the other unique hazards in this biome. One thing you'll be able to find in this planetary region is known as Volatile Uranium. They can come as a single crystal, or appear in groups, or even big bunches. The Volatile Uranium produces a small AoE effect that causes radiation damage to players and or creatures that are standing within the radius. Considering the fact that Glyphids have mutated to the radioactive environments of this biome, they are of course more resistant when it comes to the Volatile Uranium. You can easily disable the function of the Volatile Uranium by digging out the glowing center within the crystal with your pickaxe and or drills. Another hazard to come across in the radioactive exclusion zone that's not particularly dangerous but can be very annoying is known as the spider web. These thin webs are commonly found when it comes to tunnels within the cave system. Whenever players walk into it, their movement speed is drastically slowed while their vision is obscured by spider webs. You can easily get rid of the spider webs by having Bosco floating right through it, or even by setting them ablaze with a flamethrower, 
or even with Scout's Bolt Shark with the Fire Overclock. But most sources of fire can get rid of spiderwebs pretty easily. Well, now that we got all that out of the way, let's talk about what makes the Radioactive Exclusion Zone the Radioactive Exclusion Zone, with its unique biome features. Do you ever get the feeling that you're being watched? Well, you're not alone, for this cave apparently has eyes that are looking at you. Within the Radioactive Exclusion Zone, you'll have chances of finding organic eyes with purple bits surrounding them covering the walls of the cave. The eyeballs will also follow wherever you move, giving you a chilling feeling down your spine. When damaged, the eyeballs will close their eyelids, and evidently you can kill the eyeballs by dealing enough damage to them. No peeping, please. You'll also be able to find trees. Say what? A tree that's growing within a radioactive environment? In a cave? These trees are actually known as rock trees, and of course, as the name says, it's essentially a tree made entirely out of rock. The rock trees will shatter when mined into, but although some bigger trees will take a little bit more time to break, considering they have more health. You'll also be able to find very disgusting looking tumorous growths within the walls. These are weird tumors with green spots that are embedded within to them. You can also destroy them with your weapons and or pickaxe if they gross you out too much. But most importantly, within the radioactive exclusion zone, you'll be able to come across a very innocent looking plant that makes the face of a pog champ. These are known as breathers, and currently in my instance of the game, I am running the Pog Plants mod that gives the breathers and spitballers eyeballs on top of them. It essentially makes them look cuter in this version of the game. Breathers are very friendly, and it's also worth noting, you can pet the breathers for some very funny sounding voice lines. Oh, look at you! You like that! Mushy Mushy! Can I keep it? You'll even find some very weird looking flowers that are known as a Rady Puff. A flower within a cave. Always interesting. I mean, we've seen a tree, why not a flower? And then you'll also be able to see very hint samples of uranium. Though it's not volatile, it's completely worthless, but it is, of course, very fun to destroy. You'll also be able to come across very strange looking cave vines. They hang from the ceilings of caves and even tunnels. The length of the cave vines can vary between tunnel or even cave as they can go pretty much infinitely, depending on the cave length. The cave vines will follow your character whenever in range. They're not considered harmless by any means, but they do commonly get mistaken for a cave leech trying to grab them. And last but not least, within the radioactive exclusion zone, there seems to be very strange looking things you'll be able to find. The shape of them is very identical to what a double helix looks like. These can be pretty rare to find, and you can find them by themselves or even in a group. We don't exactly know the name of this object, although when you point your laser pointer at them, you'll get something that's very familiar to what's known to be as an error cube, but although the error cube is not these types of digits, this is something completely different that we don't yet know about. They also happen to have shiny studs that are littered around the surfaces that it touches and they also do make a very satisfying sound whenever you break them. That was quite a mouthful. You are now ready to face the Radioactive Exclusion Zone. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Rock and Stone.